for the debate, the member for Lambton, Kent Middlesex. Well, thank you uh, very much, uh, Speaker. And uh, before I get going, allow me to congratulate uh, our our Speaker, uh, the MPP uh, from Brant, who was in uh, the chair earlier on his uh, re-election uh, as Speaker. And congratulations uh, to you as well uh, on your role and the other uh, deputy speakers. Uh, speaker, I will be the last uh, PC MPP uh, speaking uh, to the throne speech. Speaker, it is an honour to rise and speak for the first time since the 41st Parliament was elected, and an honour to rise to help respond to the throne speech on behalf of the official opposition. Speaker, I want to spend a few moments thanking some people in my riding of Lambton, Kent, Middlesex, who are very important to me. They volunteered and worked on our vision for a better Ontario and took time out of their busy lives to improve democracy. Before I do that, I want to welcome the new members of Provincial Parliament. Congratulations on your election victories. I've had the opportunity uh, to meet a number of you, and let me say that I can see why and how you were elected. You bring many talents and strengths to this office, and I wish you in all sincerity the best of luck and my most sincere congratulations on your electoral success. I can remember when I was first elected in 2011, and I can remember standing in this house and delivering my first speech, my maiden address. I remember taking the time to thank and recognize the previous office holder in my riding, uh, Liberal MPP Maria Van Bommel, for her efforts, and I can remember reading the remarks in that very first speech. It's a special time, and I applaud all members of this house on their election and re-election. Speaker, for those of us who are returning and for those who are watching at home, I think all will agree that we need to improve the decorum in this place. Members on all sides of the House have an opportunity to do this, as it is the new beginning of a new session, a new parliament, and we have four and a half years until the next election. Speaker, we need to raise the bar in Ontario on how we do politics. I, for one, admit that, and I and others here have a role to play in this, and I know it is something that your office has worked tirelessly on yourself. I think the people of this province want us to work together, raise the decorum at Queen's Park, and to change the way we do politics, and I know it's something that I'm committed to doing. This is something that I heard, and I'm sure all MPPs heard, throughout the recent election campaign, something that I heard at the doors, whether they were blue doors, red doors, or orange doors and something that I know to be true. But, Speaker, with a new class of MPPs, as I have said, we have the opportunity to do things differently, and we have the opportunity to change the way politics is done here in our province. Moving forward, we have the opportunity to make positive changes, starting here at Queen's Park. People all over Ontario are discouraged at the direction we are heading in, discouraged at the current employment prospects, discouraged with their own situation, but on the long term, the residents of Ontario, like myself and like members of the official opposition, remain optimistic that our best days remain ahead of us and that we will turn the corner and begin to see improvements and gains here in our province. It's going to take efforts and hard work, and it's going to take some sacrifice now, but with this, better days are ahead. I know this because of the heart and because of the talent of the people in my riding of Lambton, Kent, Middlesex who rolled up their sleeves and got involved in the recent provincial election. Of course, Speaker, I need to recognize and thank my parents, Gary and Susan McNaughton, my sister Nicole Windsor, her husband Jeff, my niece Alex, my brother Mike, his wife Monica, my nephew Jordan and niece Sydney, uh, Paul Gunning, Don Adams, Dale Maris, Evelyn Towers, Bonnie and Gerald Gallant, Scott Bork, Rick DeVolder, Bill Namick, and members of my office staff, Eileen McCoy, John Fraser, Jenna Sasko, and Joshua Workman, not to mention the hundreds of others who took a sign, knocked on doors in their neighbourhood, distributed literature, or simply attended an event, and the voters, those who took the time from their busy lives to come out and vote and come out and participate in our democracy. Thank you. As I say, Speaker, it's people like this and their passion and enthusiasm for Ontario that I know deep down the residents of Ontario, like myself and MPPs here, are very optimistic that we can roll up our sleeves to start and turn things around. 
Along with these folks, Speaker, I was very lucky to have a group of lifelong Liberals in my riding supporting me as well. I work hard to serve everyone in our community, and it certainly helped at campaign time. Former Kent County Liberal Member of Parliament Rex Crawford played a big role in my campaign, as did former Middlesex Liberal MP Garnet Bloomfield. Former federal Liberal candidate and former Mayor of Wallaceburg Jeff Wesley assisted me at the grand opening of our Wallaceburg office and was a key advisor on my team, as was former Liberal Member of Parliament Rosemary Ehrs four-time campaign manager Dr. Thomas Wolder of Strathroy. It was a fun group down in Lambton, Kent, Middlesex, and a fun campaign. We were able to work for all the people in our first term. I thank our office team the most for their outstanding customer service. And Speaker, we have a customer service guarantee in our riding offices. If a constituent calls or writes, they better have a phone call back to them and some action on their file within 24 hours. And I try to make those calls myself. It is something I learned in the retail business something that is very important to me and something that I most strongly recommend to the new MPPs in this House. I hope they consider implementing this policy in their offices. I think it helps the people uh, in this province that we're elected uh, to serve. Speaker, but most importantly, I must also take a moment to recognize my wife, Kate Bartz, and my daughter, Annie. In fact, the day of the election, our daughter, Annie, turned 10 months old. I always thought that was going to be my good luck charm, Speaker, and it most certainly was. As some of you can tell by following me on Twitter or Facebook, or if you see our family at Queen's Park or in our community, my wife and daughter are my life. They are one of the reasons why I'm so passionate about politics in Ontario and why I want to dedicate my time here to make things better for our generation and the next. I remember, Speaker, how I got interested in politics at a very young age, in grade six, as a matter of fact, and it was reading about my grandfather, uh, Jack McNaughton, and how he worked for a couple of decades at having a hospital built in a southwestern Ontario town called Newbury, my hometown. Now, my grandfather passed away at a young age, a, a number of years before I was born, but it was reading about how he worked and worked to have his dream of that town having a hospital built that got me interested in politics all the way back in grade six. He literally dedicated a large portion of his life to seeing his dream realized, but it was a dream to have a hospital built for the people of that region. This to me is what service and dedication is all about. My grandfather is the reason why I ran for town council at the age of 20, part-time part -time, by the way, to fight for that same hospital he had built a generation before. I remember finding one of his business cards as a young kid. On the back of every single business card that my grandfather gave out had the following verse, and I quote, I expect to pass through this world but once. If there's any good thing I can do for my fellow man, let me not defer nor neglect it. Let me do it now, as I may not pass this way again. This is why each of us here in this building and why we have been elected by our communities. We are here to make things better for average, everyday, ordinary people in this province. It's not about red ridings or blue ridings or orange ridings. It's not about urban or rural, new Canadian versus old. It's not about union worker or non-union worker. It is about all of Ontario and rebuilding this province again to make it the leader in Canada that it very well should be. Speaker, unfortunately, uh, the recent throne speech, which was delivered on July 3rd by our Lieutenant Governor, signals the same unrealistic and unaffordable plan that the government brought forward uh, prior to the election. And Speaker, it was uh, very clearly stated that the government intends to reintroduce uh, the same budget uh, tabled in this chamber on May 1st and anticipates its speedy passage after its introduction. Speaker, we do have uh, some concerns uh, uh, about this budget and uh, in the direction uh, that the current government uh, is outlining, as I suspect uh, a certain uh, segment of the population uh, in the province uh, do as well. Speaker, June marks uh, will likely mark the 90th consecutive month our province's unemployment rate has been higher than the national average. For those who are here as part of the 40th Parliament, 
You will know that the monthly jobs numbers is something that I and other MPPs like to keep track of, and I think it's an important metric for MPPs to have in their minds when we're doing the work uh, here at Queen's Park on behalf of the people. If people aren't working, if there aren't good jobs for the people in our communities, our work is not complete. Speaker, our energy rates are the highest in North America. Businesses and job creators are literally pulling their investments from Ontario and moving them south of the border in search of cheaper energy, and this is costing all of our communities. And of course, the debt outlook, and we've heard a lot about that uh, this week, uh, has recently been changed from stable uh, to negative by Moody's, which will surely lead uh, at some point to higher interest rates and the underfunding of more services like we've uh, seen in the past, whether that's uh, home care, uh, seniors' physiotherapy, uh, and nursing, uh, nursing cuts, Speaker. Uh, earlier in the week, our leader, uh, MPP Jim Wilson, outlined how because interest rates today are at 20-year lows, they can only go up, and how each one-point increase in interest rates will equal out to a $3 billion increase in our interest payments. Speaker, this is some scary stuff, and I know uh, in my riding, uh, a number of municipal uh, mayors have brought this up because they understand that uh, a credit downgrade will affect our local uh, towns and, and cities as well. When the interest rates start to rise, just at the time that families in Ontario will begin to get squeezed on their credit cards, on their mortgages and on their car payments, that's when the province will likewise begin to feel the same squeeze, and that's when our province will be forced to react and forced to make serious choices, and I fear that this is when the government will begin to cut back on important frontline services that Ontario residents count in uh, day in and day out. Why does this matter, Speaker? Well, it matters because the third largest expenditure in government after health care and education is the interest on money borrowed. And I know uh, a number of MPPs have brought this up uh, a, a number of times, but I think it uh, bears uh, being brought up uh, once again. Ontario currently spends $11 billion per year on this interest. This money doesn't pay for anything new, just on interest payments for previous spending. $11 billion per year gone on interest payments alone. Make no doubt, we have major challenges in this province, but most importantly, Speaker, families are struggling and people are having trouble making ends meet. In southwestern Ontario, where I'm from, we are seeing record numbers of factories closing. People in my riding who made $40 an hour five years ago, some of them are now making $12.50, while their expenses and daily costs are continuing to rise. This is just a fact uh, of life right now, and, and again, I think all MPPs of all stripes are hearing this story. Speaker, I grew up working in our family's hardware store. We sold hardware, building supplies, and car parts. We have 65 employees, some of the best people and hardest workers, Speaker, that you'll ever meet. Up until I was elected in 2011, I continued working in our small business. Working in the store made me really see struggles that everyday regular people have on a daily basis. I was one to spend as much time as possible serving customers on the floor. I'm not one to sit in an office. It was important for me to know exactly what our customers are thinking. I bring this with me to this job, as many other MPPs do in this chamber as well. These are the people we must be thinking about, and these are the people who are being left behind in Ontario today. They don't have fancy organizations and expensive lobbyists representing them. And they don't have the press gallery's uh, daily attention, but these ordinary, everyday people are the ones we need to be thinking of when we work and debate here at Queen's Park. Sometimes I get the sense that governments of all political stripes and in all time periods forget what those people who walk in the doors of a hardware store are thinking. We must never forget. These are people out there facing challenges, very serious challenges. It's why we need to ensure that taxes are affordable, that government is the least intrusive possible so that people can focus their time on building their careers and looking after their families. Speaker, these are interesting times here in our province. I'm pleased and honoured and very humbled to have been re-elected by the residents of Lambton-Kent Middlesex to continue to serve as their MPP, and I'm pleased to be here as part of the 41st Parliament with many other MPPs from across the province. My mission over the next uh, four-plus years 
will be to bring forward good, solid ideas, bring them here to Queen's Park for debate, for discussion, and hopefully for implementation. Speaker, I want to stand up for the everyday, ordinary Ontario resident to stand up for Main Street, not Bay Street. There is a lot of work to be done, and as a young father who helped a family business before I was elected, I know that the future of our province is at stake. Once again, Speaker, congratulations to all MPPs on their election on June 12th, and I look forward to working with you over the next four years. Thank you. Thank you.